Okay, so um, in your lab, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to find the specific heat of different metals. So um, this problem will help us understand what's gonna happen next time. So uh, let's take a look at this. So it says that you heat up 418 gram piece of unknown metal in a water bath that is at 98 degrees Celsius, okay? So I'm gonna draw my amazing picture again. I'm gonna even put the details. It's a beaker, so it has a little lip right there. Amazing, right? Wow. Okay, and it's filled with water. Gosh, I appreciate that. I I sense some sarcasm, and then there's fire. So it's fire, okay? So you are heating up the water, and you know what? I'm even gonna put the water vapor line because. Hey, Mr. Jimenez. Oh. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, so we got a water bath, we're heating it, and then we are gonna put a 418 piece of unknown metal inside of it. So we're gonna draw, we're gonna put the metal in there. Okay, so this is our scenario, Dimitri. Okay, so let's uh get some information uh out of the problem. Okay, so we know that the mass of the metal is 418 grams. And we know that the water bath right here is 98 degrees Celsius, okay? So far, so good? Okay, so when we put a piece of metal in hot water, remember how metal has a very low specific heat, right? And so what's gonna happen is the metal is going to become the same temperature as the water around it, okay? So that means the temperature of the metal is also going to be 98 degrees Celsius. Obviously, when you do your lab, it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's not going to take more than a minute for it to become the same temperature as the water, okay? Okay, so that's our data. So far, so good? I'm sure that my drawings are helping a lot, right? Liars. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to transfer the metal into your coffee cup calorimeter. So the amazing high-tech, state-of-the-art calorimeter that you guys make with even a lid, okay? All right. Did you really? I crocheted a cover. A crochet? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I don't have it. So, I think, I don't think I've ever done more than write my name on a calorimeter before. Anyway, you're going to take the metal, and you are gonna put it in your coffee cup calorimeter. Okay? And this is what you'll actually be doing in your lab next time that we meet, okay? So far so good, make sense? Okay, so it says that the coffee cup calorimeter contains 2000 milliliters of water and the coffee cup calorimeter, the water inside is 30 degrees Celsius, okay? Okay, so the initial temperature of the water is 30 degrees Celsius. And then it tells us the temperature of the water is going to go up, obviously, right? Because if you put a hot object into a cold, into cooler water, it's going to heat up the water, right? And it tells us the final temperature of the water is going to end up 31.5 degrees Celsius. All right. It tells the density of water, which we'll use, but the big question is what the identity of the metal is. So it's asking what metal is that piece of metal that you heated and put in a calorimeter. Okay. And that's what you'll be doing next time. Okay, so that's the scenario. That's all the information that we have. Um, any questions on any part of it about interpreting the problem? You guys good? Okay, so let's figure out what metal it is. Now, on the side, we have some different substances and we have their specific heat. And so basically, we can determine the identity of this metal by finding the specific heat of the metal. Because if we find, we know that different substances change temperature at different rates, different amounts of energy. So it could figure, if we could figure out the specific heat, then we can figure out what metal it is, okay? So we have this information. I'm going to organize it a little bit more. Um, so we know that the temperature of the metal initially, so I'm going to put I, is 98 degrees Celsius. OK, 
Okay, we know that the temperature initial for the water is going to be 30 degrees Celsius. We know the final temperature of the water is 31.5 degrees Celsius. And we know that the volume of water is 2000 milliliters. And I guess you can write the density of water, which is also uh, one, or which is one gram per milliliter. Okay, Whew, that's a lot of stuff. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Okay. All right. So let's go over how to do this problem. So it's a lot of data, and we're going to have to use um, the equation that we learned last time in order to solve it. Okay, so last time that we met, we we learned about specific heat and the specific heat formula. Hold on, block this off real quick. The specific heat formula is uh, Q equals Cm delta T. What's up? No, it's gone. It's like the parable Jesus told. You come late, you don't get it. All right, anyway. Okay, so that's the uh, specific heat. So if we're trying to find, the, we're basically trying to find the specific heat of the metal because that is what will allow us to determine the identity of the metal, okay? All right, and so now we can start using this equation. Now, the first um, aspect of this situation that we need to understand is what happens in the calorimeter, okay? So we got the calorimeter, uh, we got water inside of it, and then we put the metal inside of it. Now, we said earlier that the temperature of the water is initially 30 degrees Celsius, right? Okay. And then when we heated the metal, we said the temperature, init the initial temperature of the metal is 98 degrees Celsius, right? Okay. So we know that energy is going to go from the metal into the surrounding water, right? Okay. And so what we can do is using this situation, we can use, we can uh, set up an equation. So the heat from the metal, the heat that leaves the metal, so negative Q, because you're losing heat in the metal, right? Is equal to the heat that the water is going to absorb. So just to reiterate, the heat that goes out of the metal is the same as the heat that's absorbed by the water. The metal is losing heat, so we can put a negative sign. The water is gaining heat, so it's a positive sign. Okay, make sense? All right. Okay, now that we have this setup, we can start replacing the Q, the heat, because we don't know what the heat is, right? There's no heatometer where we can just measure the heat. Uh, we can use these variables and replace them right here, okay? So let's plug them in. Um, so for the metal, I'm gonna use I'll use black because I did black here. Okay, so for the metal, we can replace the Q with C M delta T. So the heat of the metal is equal to the specific heat of the metal times the mass of the metal and the change in temperature of the metal. Okay. All we do is replace Q with that, and it's all negative. And that is equal to the Q side, the water side. And that's equal to the specific heat of water. I'll do W just for water. Uh, the mass of the water and the change in temperature of the water. Okay. All right, does that make sense? Okay. Now all we have to do is just plug and chug into the equation. Okay, do you guys want to rearrange it first or do you guys just want to plug it in? Plug and chug? Okay, we'll just plug and chug then. Okay, so do we need CM or, or do we know the specific heat of the metal right now? No, this is what we're trying to find. So we're going to leave that alone. So I'm just going to copy it down. Okay, do we know the mass of the metal? Yes, it's 418 grams. So we're going to replace that with 418 grams. Okay, now we have delta T, so the change in temperature, and we know that change in temperature 
is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. That's basically the same for any change in uh, equation. Okay, so the final temperature of water, uh, we don't really have it written down, but does anyone want to take a shot at what the final temperature of the water is? Yeah, it's going to be 31.5. Why did you say 31.5? Oh, does it say that? Yeah. For the metal? No, that's for the water. Oh, my fault. Yeah, so it goes to thermal equilibrium. Wow, great word. Yeah, so when you put the metal in the water, right, the metal is going to lose heat until thermal equilibrium, which is where they have the same final temperature. So yeah, so the final temperature of the water is equal to the final temperature of the metal. So this is also the final temperature of the metal. Okay, so our final temperature is 31.5 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature of the metal, which was 98 degrees Celsius. Okay. And then we can plug in all the stuff for water. So the specific heat of water, we always know it, it's going to be 4.18. You can drop the four. I never use the four. Um, the mass of the water. We don't know the mass of the water, but we know the volume, right? Um, so we can just do a simple conversion. We got 2,000 milliliters of water. We know that one, gram, one milliliter of water is one gram. And so these will cancel out, and that'll be 2,000 grams. I'm going to make a little bit more room. <laughs> I, feel this, I feel the exact same way. Okay. And then the final temperature of the water is 31.5, God bless you, degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature of the water, which is 30 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna erase this just so we have a little bit more space, but we basically have all the variables that we need now to find the specific heat of the metal, okay? So I'm going to give you guys about two minutes See, let's see if you guys can plug and chug it into your calculator and figure out which metal it is. All right. So I'm not going to go through the laborious task of calculating it for you guys because I respect you too much and I know you guys can do calculations. Um, but the specific heat of the metal, you should have gotten 0 0.45, about 1, 1. No, it would not be negative. Uh -huh. And then you got a negative sign, so it cancels out. That's why we put the negative sign on the heat of the metal. Yeah, so you're always going to put a negative sign in front of the, the heat of the metal because, number one, it's losing heat, so you got to put negative. But also, if you don't put the negative sign, you'll get a negative answer, and that's impossible. You can't have a negative specific heat. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, if you get a negative answer, then you can turn it to positive. So yeah, that works as well. Okay, so the identity of that metal is iron. Fair. All right. So you're going to be doing this a bunch of times on Friday for your lab. A bunch of times. We have, I think, five, five or six metals that you're going to be testing, and you're going to be calculating their specific heats. Yeah. If it's like weather. Oh, right here. Uh, where's my mouse? Oh. No, you're good. You're good. What's up? So you're just not gonna give us what the metals are. Yeah. So in the lab, it'll be a little bit different. In the lab, I'm actually gonna tell you what the metals are, but you have to determine the specific key. And so obviously, if you wanted to cheat, you can go on Google, but then your work, your data wouldn't match up with that. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> zero. My favorite number. Yeah, so you're going to get a little box with like uh, iron, tin, copper, some other stuff, right? And then you're going to do calorimetry and you're going to determine what the specific heats are for all of them. Yeah, so you'll be finding the specific heat. So you're doing the exact same thing. You just would stop right here. Yeah. What's up? And like... Will you be creating it like if you don't get it exactly? That's like I imagine it's like a little bit off. Yeah, so I mean, there's always you know issues with how specific we can get. Um, but as long as it's close and your data makes sense, then yeah, you're good. 
and since you are going to know the identity of the metals anyway, you can look it up and see if it's close. And if it's wrong, that means you mess up on the lab. So you can always redo it. You'll have two calorimeters each, so you can have multiple going at one time. Yeah. All right, good questions. All right, any other questions? Okay, we are going to go into the last part of thermochemistry. We're almost done with the unit. And we're going to be learning about something called the heat of formation and the heat of vaporization, okay? Now, I like these problems because, number one, they're really long. Number two, I like the way that you can read it. Maybe. Um, so heat of formation, the variable, it really might be on the test, is H, H fuzz, and then the other one is H vap. Okay, H vap. So H fuzz and H vap. No, not VAP, H fuzz and VAP, VAP. So formation, so for it could either be formation or the other term that's used is fusion. Okay. Yeah, FUS. So it can be FUS. You can do four if you want, as long as you understand what it means. And H VAP, vaporization. Sure, whatever you're good with, as long as you understand the variables. And if I give you the variables, you know what it means. Okay, so we're gonna be ending with H fuzz and H fab. Okay. All right, so let me teach you guys the basic principle of what H fuzz and H vap are. And then after that, we'll go straight into the problems. Okay. Okay, so um we have this graph right here. Okay, I want you guys to copy it down. Make it kind of a not big, but like a good amount of size. We're gonna be writing inside of it. So you want a decent amount of size in there. I would say maybe a quarter, a fifth of a page in terms of height you can use a whole page if you want i don't want to restrict you guys in your note taking but you want to you want to be able to write inside of the uh inside of the graph okay huh uh we're going to be taking some notes about the graph yeah to help us understand okay you guys ready so let's say it's a good example who wants to be a volunteer for my example Okay, we'll use Vivian. So let's say that we are, no, you don't need to come up here. You're going to sit there. We're just using you as a hypothetical oh. example, okay? So let's say that we have uh, Vivian, okay? So I'm going to draw a picture of Vivian. She got hair, right? And, and let's say today she's wearing a dress and then she has a, she has a lightsaber. Okay. Mm, lightsaber, okay? So that's Vivian, okay? So let's say, Vivian is the system that we are observing, okay? And then she's in AP chemistry, so she's sad. Okay, all right. So Vivian is the system. Now, Vivian is in what state of matter right now? She is a solid, exactly. So relative to all, like the range of temperature, solids are pretty low on the temperature range, right? So let's say we start right here, okay? So this is where Vivian starts, and this is where Vivian's a solid. Okay, and let's say that we put Vivian into a microwave, and <laughs> this is getting a little dark, and then, or like Anakin, right? You know how he was on Mustafar and he was in the lava, right? So we put energy into the system. We put a lot of thermal energy into Vivian. What's going to happen to the temperature of Vivian? Yeah, it's going to go up, right? Pretty steadily, right? So we're going to go... The Vivian's temperature is going to go up. Okay, good. And so what we're going to do is on this line, we're going to write that Vivian is a solid. Okay, so we're putting, her, we're putting her in lava or next to lava, and she's heating up, but she's still a solid. Now, it's not very healthy at all. Okay. That's why I wanted Vivian's consent before she was the system. Okay, now we're going to get to a certain temperature where Vivian is going to start melting, right? <laughs> this is really funny, sorry. Sorry, it's not personal, Vivian. If it was anyone else, I think it's funny still. But we're going to get to a certain temperature that Vivian starts melting, okay? Now, the interesting thing is, when you have any substance, whether it's Vivian, water, a rock, metal, right? When that substance starts melting, the temperature actually does not go up even when you're putting energy into it. Okay, and the reason why is that there are certain uh, 
there are certain energy that keeps the molecules that make up the system together, right? And during this time when Vivian is melting, those bonds are being broken apart, okay? So even though we're putting energy into v Vivian, she is not, her temperature is not going to go up. And that process, we call it melting when you go from solid to liquid. But so when you go this way, it's melting. But when you go up the other way, what do we call that? Yeah, freezing. Solidifying would work too, yeah. Yes, because going from liquid to solid, yeah. Like, yeah, that's freezing. It is freezing. It's freezing cold. It is. Well, cold is relative, remember? Exactly. Yeah, relative to the temperature it was at. Okay, so... Now we're gonna get to a point where every single molecule that Vivian is made out of is melted. And so once every single molecule that Vivian is made out of is melted, what state of matter does she exist in now? Yeah, she's a liquid. And so now we have liquid Vivian. And so this Vivian right here is now a puddle. And she's still sad, but she still has her lightsaber. Okay. I could have, but I think it's more interesting doing it this way. Okay, now, once Vivian is a liquid, we can start putting more energy inside of the system, and the temp Vivian's temperature is going to go up again, right? So, linearly. Now, we're going to get to a point where every single molecule that Vivian is made out of, liquid Vivian is made out of, has now reached the next point where it's about to change into the next state of matter. So when you go from liquid to gas, what do we call that? Yeah, evaporation, boiling. Um, we'll call it vaporization, though, so that we can keep this term, okay? Okay, so when we, we go, ooh, wrong way. Okay, so when we go from this to this, we call this vaporization. Okay, and then when we go from gas to liquid. Yeah, we call that condensation. Okay. But in this situation, Vivian is vaporizing. Like how hot would it have to be for someone to like actually turn into a gas? A human? Yeah. Uh, so the water inside your body just 212, but your organic matter, especially like your bones made out of calcium, that'll take a really a lot, like it's like hundreds, maybe thousands for the calcium. I'm not sure. I've never studied this extensively. It's like, I just want to. All right, so now Vivian has completely vaporized. So every single molecule that Vivian is made out of is now a gas. And so now you can put energy into Vivian and then her temperature will still go up. Okay, so now we have gaseous Vivian. And we'll stop right there. Okay, pretty hot then. And so now Vivian is a gas. Okay, so we can't draw a gas. So this is Vivian. No, clouds are made of water. They're liquid water. Oh my God, it could melt you. Okay, so Vivian is still sad. Thank you, Vivian, for your sacrifice. For, for your sacrifice for science. We appreciate it. What's up? Oh. Bailey's asking the real questions. But it's okay because now she's gas, yeah, so she can use force lightning. No, it's not. No, it's the, it's the energy that we're putting into the system. Okay, so you guys can kind of see what the graph looks like, right? Now, Basically, this tells us that when you have a solid, as you put energy in, the temperature steadily goes up or down. Um, and then when it gets to the melting point, this is also the point that we call formation. So let's change up the language, just to make it a little more chemi. We'll call it formation. Okay. And then once every single molecule has become a liquid, you put in energy, the temperature is going to go up. And then you're going to get to the point where every single uh, liquid molecule is at the at the boiling point, And we call that the point of vaporization. So vaporization. 
And then once all the molecules are vaporized, we get to a gas, okay? So if we wanna think about it in terms of real terms, um, let's say that you have water and then you're boiling the water, right? That water will never get past the boiling point until every single water molecule has become a gas, okay? So every single one of them has to be become a gas before the temperature can go up again, okay? That's basically what this means. All right, now, when we are in solid, liquid, and gaseous form, the energy that we need to increase our temperature is very easy. So when they're in their state of matter, so let's write this down. So when they're in their state of matter, SOM, okay, the, the way that we calculate the heat that's needed to raise our temperature is just what we did earlier. The specific heat of that compound, the mass of the compound, and the change in temperature. So that's something that we already know. Um, changing the temperature, or to find the heat that's needed to change the temperature, we just use the state of matter. However, um, we need to use a different formula during the, uh, the phase of formation and vaporization. And luckily for us, it's actually a lot easier. So during the state of change, so when it's for going through formation or vaporization, the heat is just equal to how much of it you have and whatever the heat of fusion or vaporization is. Okay, and they all have their independent uh, constants. No, unless. Okay, so easy way to think about it. The uh, heat of fusion is the energy it takes to melt a substance and the heat of vaporization is the amount of energy it takes to vaporize a substance, okay? All right, any questions about that? Yeah. How do you be vaporized? No, no. <laughs> I don't think we have the capacity here. No. Also, okay, so let's take a look at some of what those numbers look like. Okay, so let's look at the first column. So the melting point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. And the heat of vaporization is this value right here. So it takes this much energy, 6.01 kilogram or kilojoules to melt one mole of water. Okay. And then after that, it starts heating up as a liquid and it, it, it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And then the amount of energy it takes to vaporize water, go from liquid to gas, is 40.67 kilojoules per mole. So if you guys notice, it takes significantly more energy to vaporize something than to melt it, right? And then you can see the same trend for different compounds. So since you're so interested in metals, we got sodium. Um, sodium melts at about 208 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the amount of energy it takes per mole to uh, melt it is 2.6 kilojoules. And then um, sodium is going to boil at 1,621 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it takes 98 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So yeah, if you ever wanted to boil sodium, you got to get it that hot. Okay. Easy peasy. Let's microwave it. Okay, so let's do a practice problem, and then... That way you guys can see how to do this. Okay, and this may or may not be on your test. Okay, so calculate the amount of energy it takes to turn 14 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius into 150 degrees Celsius steam. And then you got a bunch of different numbers. If you've done this already, you know this is a long process. A lot of maths. All right, so what we're gonna do is when you do these problems, I think the easiest way to do it, to visualize it is to draw this graph. So let's draw a smaller version of the graph that we had. And then we're gonna draw your little staircase. Okay. Okay, so the first line right here is when you have it as a solid. The second line right here is when you have it as a liquid, and then this is when you have it as gas.
All right, so far so good. Okay. Do you guys need a little more time to copy the graph down? I'll wait like 30 seconds. Huh? It doesn't crack anymore unless I like snap it or like I whip it. <laughs> then you won't have a test if I die. Okay. That is some good news for you guys. So if you guys don't want to take a test, you know how to take me out. But I might take you out first. No, you can leave me here to die. Take the test. Okay. So what we want to do is first we want to identify um, where we're going to start in this, uh, this little stepwise process. So we have 14 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So are we going to be at the solid, liquid, or gas phase? Yeah, liquid. Okay. So we're going to start somewhere in the liquid phase, and we are going to start at 20 degrees Celsius. So we're going to start here. Yay, start. OK, now where do we want to end up? We want to end up at 150 degrees Celsius steam. So we're going to end as a solid or as a gas? Gas, yes. OK, so we want to end at 150 degrees Celsius gas. This is where we want to end. Okay, and the reason why I told you guys to draw this graph is because it will help us know how many steps we need to take to calculate our final answer, okay? So the first step that we need to take for calculating our first our answer is this phase right here where we go from liquid to the boiling point. This is step one. This is our first calculation. Okay, when we go from liquid to the boiling point. And it tells us right here, uh, the boiling point of water, uh, we it says it in the chart above, is going to be at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's step one. Okay, step two is right here, and that's going to be when we are vaporizing all of our water. And then step three is when we are heating up our gas so that it can go to 150 degrees Celsius. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you'll get your numbers for that. Yeah. I think even for water, if you get a problem like this, you'll get all the points for it. Yeah. All right, y'all chilling. Okay, let's do our first calculation. So our first calculation is when we are going from as a liquid from twenty degrees to one hundred degrees Celsius. Okay, this is step one. Okay, so when we, we know that when we're changing temperature, we can just use Q equals C M delta T. So this part should be, uh, you guys should know how to do this already. So I'm going to give you guys about two minutes. See if you guys can calculate the energy it takes to take water from 20 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. All the values that you need are right here. Take about two minutes to do that, and then I'll give you guys the answer in two minutes. Okay, so... Um, specific heat of water. What did you guys plug in for that? Yeah, 4.18, but let's be very careful with the units of measurement here, okay? So it's going to be joules per grams, uh, degrees Celsius or Kelvin. It's going to be the same thing, okay? Okay, what's the mass? Yeah, 14 grams. Okay, and then for the delta T, we would just do 100 minus 80. So it's going to work 20, which is 80 degrees Celsius. My fault. Okay. okay, so from there, we can cancel out the units. So what's going to be the final unit of measurement for this for this equation? Joules, yeah. We're going to be left with joules because grams cancels out. The Kelvin and temperature Celsius can cancel out because there it's change. Yeah, and so all we have left over is joules. So if we plug it into our calculator, we should get... 4,681.6. Good. Okay, so basically, the amount of energy it takes to go from here to here, it's going to take 4,681.6 joules. Did I see a hand up? Okay, never mind. I'm seeing things. 
It's not, dude. I'm lose. I'm losing my mind. I don't even know who I am sometimes. Mr. Hydroxide. No. It's all the hydroxide. Okay. Let's go on to step two now. Now, step two is where we are vaporizing everything, right? We're going to be vapping it. Okay, the vap process. I have to be careful because I, before vaping was a thing, I could say we're going to be vaping it, but then now it sounds like I'm promoting something that I shouldn't be, which I don't. So, okay. So for vaporization, the equation is the heat required is mass times the enthalpy of vaporization. So from here, it's very simple. Um, we just need to fill in mass, which is 14 grams. Okay. And then we're going to multiply that by the heat of vaporization, but we are given it in 40.67 kilojoules per what? Mole. Okay, which means we need to convert the grams of water into mole, which is pretty simple. Uh, molar mass of water is 18. So you can just do 14 divided by 18, and then you can replace that number. 0 0.7, I'll just do 7, 8 moles. Yes. 14 divided by 18, because uh, 14 grams of H2O, just a simple dimensional analysis, 18 grams of H2O per mole, and that will give you a zero point. It's like seven, 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 eight, but it'll you can just do moles. Okay. Any questions about that? Part's pretty easy. All right. So we do our calculations and you should get 31 point. I'm around it to six three. Okay. 31 point. If you got like six two. That's totally fine too. Six three six. Wait, what did I punch in? Point seven. Oh, I multiplied the wrong thing. Oops. Rude. Okay, thirty one point seven two versus thirty one point six three will not make a big difference. Okay, seven two. Uh, kilojoules. Okay, now the key thing is this is in kilojoules now, okay? Okay, so going from two to three, or step two, going vaporizing everything is going to be 31.72, but again, we need to specify that it's in kilojoules. Okay. I apologize for my mistakes, guys. Will you forgive me? No, okay. Well, I won't forgive you for your mistakes either. <laughs> Okay, which are many, which are many, 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 many. No, I don't know, man, because especially that first test, I showed you how to do that density problem, but everybody got it wrong. Okay, my fault, not you. <laughs> Everyone except the girl that was liquefied and then vaporized today. All right, you guys ready for step three? Okay, and then you guys can probably see how to do step three now, right? So step three is where we take the gas and we're going to be taking the gas from the boiling point, which was 100 degrees Celsius. And we're going to be taking it yeah, to 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I am going to give you guys three minutes to try to do this one on your own. And then after that, see if you can find the total amount of energy it took to go through all three of these steps to take 14 grams of water from 20 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees steam. Okay, so uh, we are gonna go over this last part. So for this one, same equation, Q equals Cm delta T. So if we plug in the C value, it's still, oh, it's not still 4.18 because we're talking about water vapor. So we're not using 4.18 no more. We are using 1.996 joules per gram kelvin okay mass is 14 grams still and then the change in temperature is going to be 50 degrees celsius okay so the amount of energy it takes to heat up steam from boiling point um to 150 degrees celsius is i got 1397.2 
okay? And that's gonna be in joules. So the amount of energy that it takes to go from here to here is going to be 1397.2. All right, so we're not done yet because we wanna calculate the total amount of energy to do all three of these steps. And so your Q value, the total Q, is going to be equal to, I'm going to convert all these to kilojoules, but if you did it in joules, that's fine too. Uh, 4.68, I'm going to round up, okay, kilojoules, plus 31.72 kilojoules, plus 1.397 kilojoules, and then that's going to give you a final answer of... around 37.8 kilojoules, around there. Did I move a decimal? No. Joules to kilojoules, one, two, three, 4.682. Yeah, if you got it in joules, you got it, just multiply it by a thousand. So that's equal to 37, one, two, three, joules, around there. Yes, that's why the number gets smaller. It goes from 4,681 joules to 4.68 kilojoules. Yeah. Whew, I thought I did it wrong again. Not yet. I'll make more mistakes. Don't worry. What if everything I taught you guys was wrong? And I'm just prepping you guys to fail so I can laugh at you. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Pretty funny for me. Yeah, yeah, easy peasy. Watch, I'm gonna start teaching you guys about vibranium now from Wakanda. All right, so uh, for the rest of the class period, I'm gonna give you guys the last problem to try out. Just a heads up, this is very similar to what will be on your test, maybe. Uh, not exact, but very similar. No, you can. All right, so I'm going to give you guys about, what time is it? I'm going to give you guys 20 minutes to do this. If you guys need to go to the restroom, you can go to the restroom during that time. Um, So this will be our break slash working time. But I'm going to give you guys 20 minutes to try out this problem. Um, See if you guys can get it together or on your own. I don't really mind how you work on it, but we'll go over the answer after. Okay? I, on April 4th, like not Mr. Because I'll be having it like an extra. Like on April 4th, like, the drive to like, the guys are moving back down here in the test.